How are we lads and ladies? If there are any ladies watching, I can't imagine there's many, but if you are, how are you doing? I'm very excited for you to see this video. I recently went over to, only bloody back from the trip last night, went over to the Devonshire in London. Probably the most popular, most talked about pub in the world as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned at the moment. Only opened back in November and it's the amount of messages I've been getting saying, have you been to the Devonshire yet? Yeah, it's great, this, that and the other. So it was about time I went and checked it out for myself. I had a very special guest alongside me. I honestly can't remember a video where I had more crack and more fun than this. It was just a good old time. Now I've stepped things up recently, lads, with the video production. We've got a cameraman, we've lights to be paying for, etc. So I just want to give a massive shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and helping to keep this channel alive. Coming up to kind of mid-February, end of February, you're re-evaluating your New Year's resolutions, hoping, I'm hoping, you've stuck to your grooming resolutions. If you are a hairy ape and you need to get sorted down there, well, there's only one place to go. The new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped is probably the best razor in the world. It's not just a trimmer, it's your grooming sidekick, lads. Equipped with two skin-safe blade heads, a standard one for, you know, taking a little bit off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth. And the Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 has just got everything you need for your grooming needs. Comes with the essential aftercare product, the crop preserver and the crop soother. They throw in a pair of Manscaped boxers, it comes in a lovely little travel bag, enough said. So join the 10 million plus men around the world who trust Manscaped for their grooming needs. Go to manscaped.com, use code PINTS20 for 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you Manscaped for helping make these types of videos possible. Now lads, buckle up and watch the chaos ensue in the Devonshire. We are here in the middle of a rainy day in Soho. The Devonshire pub only opened two months. It's absolutely rammed, booked out the door every day and night. And I have brought a very good friend of mine. I thought, who is the most poshest Londoner I know? Come into frame, back on the channel. Hi. Yes. The little James man. Yeah. The little man. <laughs> the little man. He begged every well, night and yes. day. Every night and day Please. messages. I've never been so famous as I was with the Guinness Guru channel. Exactly. He made my day come true. It's not even called that anymore. I know, it's called, you know, Dara and Friends. <laughs> it's called um, Show Me The Money. Yeah. You sold yourself out, haven't you? It's so, called Sell Out, Show Me The Money. Show Me The Money. Um, you'd know all about that. I would. Um, we're going to get you I'm and your rock hard nipples in here. I've got rock hard nipples? Well, you're wearing a white t-shirt. I am, yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> me and the unit are going to go in. She's laughing at my rock hard nipples. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pull a couple of points, we've got a little... <laughs> Hand pumper. <laughs> Have oh, we? I'm, hand hand pump. I'm doing a lot of hand pumping at the moment. <laughs> but like, for reasons that only you'll we read about in the Daily Mail. We want you to get into that. Uh, right, let's go in. Right. Jesus Christ, what an intro. Remember the last time you were like, oh, fuck out. Yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> Very exciting. Right, I have something special for you here, Hassan. Where are we going here? Ooh. Oh, now it's all. We don't even need it, we can just walk around. <laughs> yeah, just climb over that. Well, I love when you make a subtle entrance in the London pub with your own content creator, video, video, you know, cameraman. And James Haskell. I tell you, I mean, I'm a deadly celebrity, but still, it... How's, know. how's life, how's life been since, obviously, the last video? I went, <laughs> honestly, I was, there was a real busy period where lots of people were, were contacting me. Things have faded a bit recently. Yeah, so um, that's why, little brown envelope. Yeah. For, I'm back on now. Now I feel like I'm involved with you. This is the hottest spot in London. So yeah, you have been you, here. You can say it. I have been here once before. Actually, we had a bit of a session at Hawksmoor. I had a big steak dinner. Myself, Mike Tindall, Claude, um, and a couple of other mates came in here. And actually, do you know what? The service is amazing. I walked in, and a guy by the bar goes, "Do you need somewhere to sit?" And I was like. Yes, please. Took me through to a little executive suite out the back, a couple of Guinnesses, and then I had to rush home to be daddy daycare. But it was amazing, service is brilliant, and I love the traditional nature of the pub, and the fact that Guinness and the quality comes first. Take my job, mate. I will. So we're gonna have a Guinness later. Yes. For now, we're gonna do a bit of hand pumping. Because there's uh, more to life than Guinness. Yeah, Guinness and hand pumping. Yeah, my, mate, <laughs> some Guinness, too many Guinnesses will lead to lots of hand pumping. Right, we're going to do the hand pumper first. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's the, the best way. That's the, oh, I quite like the best way. Right, back over the velvet okay, rope. Hello, are you right? Thank you. My pleasure. Selfies. Guilty. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got the best three hand pump beers in the country today. Oh, yeah. Carpentry or... Yeah. So, 
English beers have always traditionally been done secondary fermentation in the cellar. Yep. And they just come in a barrel with no pressure. And you pull them up in an old fashioned way with, with the strength of your hand. So it's just a perfectly made old fashioned style beer with national conditioning only yep. from the, uh, the yeast making yep. carbon dioxide and alcohol. So it's got less bubbles in, but it's got brilliant flavor. I've got to admit, I, I've actually, my old man, has a hand pump in in the home. So Obviously you're actually pulling up like a well. About ten times. Well, I'm all right. Just now we're gentle. Well, we're gentle. Well, we're gentle. Can we do one too real quick? Yeah, quick. yeah show me how to do it. Oh. Beer glass. We're going to do a pint of um, Timmy Taylor Landlord, uh, Northern style. So it's got this green tip at the bottom. It's okay. sort of sparkling. That goes right in the corner like that, and a really soft, slow pull puts the beer into the glass. That's my favourite. That sort of slow pull. Yeah. So it just goes into the in, in there from the bottom, and if you see, it looked cloudy, but what that is there is the natural conditioning from the beer. Tiny little Jeez, bubbles, nice, yeah. yeah, making a beautiful head on the top like that. So you stick it down there like that, and uh, you wait for it to settle the same way you would in any other beer. And then when you get it, you can see the bottom. You've got is this it, beautiful clarity at the bottom. Are they all ales? They're all ales. Oh, yeah. yeah, some use more malt, some use more hops. Yeah, uh, they're, they've all got slightly different flavours. This right. is a London one. Uh, and these are Can, I, can I just ask a question? Sorry yeah, yeah, to, yeah, 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 yeah. Inter to intervene in your show. Oh, but I'm quite interested. So, like, obviously, you, you know, everyone's coming here to pride themselves on the Guinness, the quality of food. Have you extended the same focus to, er to everything? Because obviously, what a some, cause some, some bars and stuff, like, they start well, but it's like an afterthought. But the very we, fact that everything you're focusing on well, is like, man. We, we've got this uh, phrase in the, in, in the business God is in the detail. Fine. So, every t everything we do, whether it's the steak knife, the wine glass, the beer glass, the, the other products, we want to make sure we do. Fine. Is that, I love the. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah stick it right in the box. No, I, I always stick it right in the bottom. Yeah. Do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if I get cancelled, because I'm always close to getting cancelled. Any more glasses? I work here in Port and Pine. All day long, mate. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Don't forget, stick it in the bottom and pull your own. Mate, well, old, it, old Wadsworth six there, Timmy it. Taylor's. I love it. All that stuff. I, you know. When, the, when it's right. It's the yeah. best thing I yeah, can drink. Yeah, I know, yeah, I love it. Osh, are you keeping that all the way in the bottom? All the way in the bottom. All the way. Give it a little bit more welly, give it a little bit more head. I don't See? have the same guns That's as the it. big fella. Look oh, at that. Oh. Look at that point. Oh. I better let it settle. Cheers, Guinness. Guinness. Patience, lads. Patience. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Osh, is that a crime if I drink and not settle? Go for it. Oh, fuck it. That's lovely. It's a beautifully oh, balanced, yeah. and it's not fizzy. But no. it does have conditioning, a bit of sparkle to it. Look at the way it clings the glass. You know yeah. it's top on. There. Beautiful. But uh, yeah, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Man. Right, we're going to go um, chat a bit of shit in the back. Go on. Oh, right. thanks, mate. Yeah, that's very we'll kind of you. Thank you. Say, like, you would have started playing professionally. <laughs> you're famous now, Chief. You're in. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when would you have started playing with, like, the big boys, like rugby? Uh, so I started when I was 17. Um, I joined Wasps. Well, I lit so I left school. Um, at sort of 17 to go into a pre-season in my last year before I went into final year. I played for Wasps twice in the senior team against um, uh, Connaught and Claremont, which is mental. Claremont. And you know, who? Uh, and um, Connaught. 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 The Brits, they just can't say it. How do you say it then? Connaught. 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 And right? how, how do you say the, the, the war god Ireland's Peter Omani? Yeah, not too bad. Omani. Yeah. Omani. We say Omani. Mal. I just shout Mal and everyone knows what it is. <laughs> Mal, it's Pierre. Um, no, but What's I, it, referee? Mal. So, in terms of like with pub culture and stuff, and like I played in a probably a slightly uh, lower down yeah. rugby team than you. A little bit. A little bit. I love how you went a slightly lower. Maybe yeah. one league. Well, um, <laughs> quite shit, but let's not go on with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But talk me through the difference. Say that's, that's really 20 years ago. Yeah. To now, the difference, or to since you retired, yeah. which isn't that long ago, like the the, the professionalism with going to the pub, yeah. alcohol, all that. So and you're obviously in. All right, Nick. All right, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute BLT. Talk big lean tan. Sort of My tan's 20, actually faded recently. Oh. Twenty year kind of difference. Um, I, I, so truthfully, <laughs> when I first got into, it, I was the very first player off the conveyor belt of the uh, like academy system. So all I knew was professional sport. Um, I didn't know anything different. I had, I uh, but the players that I had work, were working with were kind of the last of the crossover between the amateur and professional era. So they had, you know, met up on a Sunday um, uh, for, uh, you know, tr sort of played on a Saturday, trained on a Sunday, uh, met up with, the, say, for example, the national team on a Wednesday, trained Wednesday, Thursday, played for their country on Saturday, two days training. It was it's nonsense. Yeah. So 
uh, you know, and they would then go back to work on a Monday, um, and they would and they would meet up and get special dispensation to go for their for their club team. And did, did, sorry, but did that just like when the professionals, yeah. they, they were just all of a sudden getting yeah. paid. I'm so sure what, the yeah. money wasn't huge. No, it was. The problem is, what, what was, so if you ask the guys, <laughs> what happened is when, when rugby went professional, nobody had any idea what you should pay and what was right. So yeah. loads of people came in, <laughs> thought it was going to make loads of money, like yeah. football. Yeah. So they all just went completely mad. So guys were on mad salaries, paying everyone. Obviously, quickly they realised that it didn't make any money. Mm. And so they, they obviously changed it. But the first few guys, off the, uh, calves, calves off the rank, were making some pretty good money, um, you know, and obviously... Just you know, throwing numbers out just there. Just throwing numbers, because yeah. they didn't know. What, what, yeah. what, what would you pay a top international rugby player? So that kind of then changed and, and then levelled off. In terms of my experience, I was not a big drinker when I played. For a long, for long time, I was completely teetotal. I think I, I sort of thought that completely. it would... Completely? Completely. Thought it would Even off-season? Off-season, yeah. I thought, thought it would affect my fitness. I was like super sort of yeah. dedicated. And then I realised that actually... i tell you where it, where it changed. We went on a team social with Was. Um, when we just won the premiership. I wasn't really drinking, and I remember that. Um, what year? What age? This was. I was. Uh, must have been 19, 18, 19, something like that. I, I had drunk. I had drunk. Don't get me wrong. But You've been on as if you were a teetotal for like ten years. No, no, 18. no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> well, I was legal. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> teetotal oh, from shit. twelve. Yeah, sorry. What I meant was that I, I, you know, I'd obviously uh, drunk a little bit, but I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't go out. I wouldn't go out for nights out. And those were the, the fucking tempting nights. Yes, yes, yeah. very much so. But I, so I, went, I turned up for a team social, and I remember that we had another guy called uh, Tom Reese who um, sadly retired, but unbelievable <coughs> player, played for England. Mm. And he, we all sat round, and um, I was like trying to avoid drinking, um, and Tom was trying to avoid drinking. He got a diet coke, and I mean, one of the senior players, a guy called Phil Greening, saw Reese, and he went, "Oh, Reese, Phil fucking you Greening, fuck, are you fucking." Dr are you drinking? And Reese is like, oh, no, I don't really drink, right? And all the lads went, hit him till he drinks. And they all just <laughs> piled into him, piled into him. Right? Anyway, I'm not awesome. saying that's a good way of getting people to, to drink. Piled into him, battered him until he ordered a pint. He got absolutely <laughs> fucked. Yeah. Got absolutely fucked. The last time I saw him, he was spewing the urinal. He then had England on the 21s training the next day, turned up, trained the best he's ever trained, <laughs> out trained everybody. Everyone was like, fuck me, Reese, what have you done? This is amazing. Um, and from that day on, was he drunk? And then he became a doctor. You know what medical students are like. So that was that was a pivotal point. And I sat in the corner, going, "Jesus, if, if Reese is going to have to drink, I'll, I'll have to do it." And that's where I woke up, and and I'd, I turned up to a Hawaiian day in in jeans mm. and, a, and a Hawaiian shirt and flip flops. Someone saw me and was like, "That's not fucking Hawaiian dress." I said, "Yes, it is." He goes, "No, don't wear um, jeans in Hawaii." Cut the bottoms them off. <laughs> cut the bottoms off. Cut my pockets off. Left my boxer shorts out. Oh, so like, half, oh my big massive legs. Yeah, my shirt. massive quads. Half, but halfway <laughs> through the afternoon, someone put, then wedged me, pulled my boxer shorts off. So my testicles, like Alan Partridge, were hanging out my trousers. <laughs> walking on around on a Saturday in, in broad daylight in Fulham, I then woke up the next day in some <clears> front woman's someone some woman's living room. Or she obviously knew I was there in an armchair with my testicles hanging out, like so hungover, I had to call a family friend to drive me home and then I passed out on the lawn and my mum thought a homeless person had, had passed out in front of the lawn <laughs> and it was me and that was my first proper team social and basically I haven't really looked back since then. Would, but would that still go on? Like when did you retire? So I retired 2019. Well, like that was hardly going on in 2019 in Wasps. Uh, uh, no, so, I, I know the socials and rugby, sorry to yeah. go off but rugby, I, like I, like when you compare rugby to other things, like rugby, those still have, like they're having the fucking, the Irish lads are having a point to Guinness yeah. after the game. I think other sports are just like, don't show them drinking. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's not going to fucking kill I know, them. and that's the problem. I, I think, so, so yeah. actually, with was for my, for my early years, so I, I spent 12 years, first year five, uh, second year six with them. Um, and essentially, oh sorry, six and six, sorry. And, um, too many bangs on the head. And um, <laughs> I, I basically, when I, when I retired from there, mm. we, we were the hardest, players on the field and in, in, in terms of conditioning and exercise, but also parted off it within yeah, reason. So yeah. um, by the end of it, I actually didn't have a problem with drinking because I knew how professional I would be. And actually once a week or one, you know, once a month or twice a month wasn't really a problem. Mm. So by the end of it, we would confine it to team socials, but team socials would get pretty messy. I mean, the last team social I went on actually made it into the, the Daily Mail. Um, <laughs> it's a long story. It's in my autobiography. What a flanker! It basically plug. escalated. We have plug, and then a follow-up. Uh, six me. minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the third one. If you if you if you, if you read them and you're confused, there's five. You know, uh, approach without caution. Five pillars to take control of your life. But anyway, let's not go on and, about uh, the yeah. DJ. Do <laughs> yeah, and I DJ to make music. But let's not laugh about me. <laughs> How many records have I got out? Twelve. Um, and so, <laughs> but the truth is that I that the, the, last, the, 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 the last the last team social we we had. We went on a stag do boat in the middle of the, the Thames 
Um, and it was concerning oh, that the, 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 the captain of the boat turned up two hours late because um, he'd misread the tides, which uh, first of all is your job as a captain slightly worrying. And then um, basically the boat escalated until, until an academy car guy, basically, I won't spoil it, but did, did something, tried to make a beer fountain by inserting a bottle into somewhere and it all went horribly wrong. And then they tried to sell a story and, they, and it ultimately- well, Apparently you're not spoiling there. <laughs> yeah, well, what happened when the bottle came out? Um, and basically, we, yeah, and, the, and the, the, the new mod, the whole story is that the boat people wanted compensation and they asked for, wait for it, eight million pounds worth of compensation from WAS, from a team social. Like, bear in mind that the people who sadly got injured during that Thorpe Park accident where they, the ride crashed, they lost limbs, got five million between like six of them. They wanted eight million pounds worth of thing from, uh, uh, from a team on a Stagby boat. For so, what, just wrecking the boat a bit? Mate, the boat wasn't ready. It was just—it was like they were mad. It was like but if you recount the story, the trauma, think, yeah, trauma, just money. trauma, yeah, trauma, money. yeah, basically, <laughs> like what people had seen and stuff. Like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was like it was mental. So, to be honest, with you team socials could get pretty loose. Unfortunately, now with camera phones, that's mm. a massive issue. And for me, I re very much kind of stay away from that stuff. I see people trying to film me all the time. I, mm. I, I absolutely hate it. I feel like yeah, with the phones, that's probably maybe half or slightly less than. Half your career was without, and yeah, then... Yeah. The early days were out. So when I woke up in that woman's living room in an armchair... She wasn't um, filming you. She wasn't filming me, thank God. Because they had the <laughs> Nokia 3310. I mean, you still probably do a bit of damage to that. Plain snake. Plain snake. <laughs> right, we're going to grab a pint of Guinness, and then... You're probably sick of talking about rugby, but it will That's be... Fine. It will be an honour, and I genuinely mean this, to chat a bit of Six Nations. You can chat about whatever you want with me. Yeah. As long as the Guinness keeps coming, we're in. Yeah. <laughs> Back out. <laughs> People's favourite, and Bree, and tight smiles. And then, <laughs> over. Hello, right lads, we're here with Ross, head barman here at the Devonshire. You bought one before? Yes. No, oh, I, I, I have bought one, yeah. one in the, the Sheep Haven Bay. Right. Show me what you have, and I'll show yeah. you what you're doing wrong. All right, fine. Yeah, right. No right. There, yeah, no, he gives out to me because I never smile. <laughs> Right, so we're in. So we use this box here. So go for a glass and show me what you have, and then I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. Okay. What do you reckon, Darren? It's probably a bit high, but last time I poured it too light. I'd say. Gee, you think it's fucking smashed? Yeah, yeah. That's why I never. Yeah. Put it straight through the thing. I'm doing it long enough now, lads. <laughs> We go just top of the harp. Just top of the harp is where we normally pour top it. Top of the harp, so you want a bit low. Oh, you want a bit low, did I? Yeah. You don't want to be filling a half. But you go very fucking high. I was yeah. thinking, is he just forgot about it, but he's That's just what so I thought, yeah. Well, that. hold on, now you see, now he's sold you. Just smash it through the thing. <laughs> smash it in, stab it on. There's no delicacies. Do you need to fucking get it? <laughs> oh, is he going a bit early? You, you went pretty low on that hat. It's alright, it's alright. Jeez, the nozzle's straight in. Fucking hell. That's alright, we don't mind that. I'm not mad on it. Oh, really, yeah? Why? Put a fucking shamrock in it while you're there. Oh, that's alright. You went a bit low. Low report. A bit low and then a bit high. If you don't spill that, it's a miracle. Oh, shit. Oh, it's gone. Absolutely okay. fucked. Fuck. Far oh, left. What the fuck are you doing now? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Daily Mail. James no, sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> No, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright. That's one for the bin, that's one for the bin, I reckon. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll have that. So, sorry, sorry. Daily Mail. I'll finish it, I'll have it, I'll have it, sorry. Fucking hell. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's drinking it now. Oh, hard luck, mate. Never mind, no. The first time I did this, I actually smashed it. I got a little bit of carried away, the yeah, pressure was off. Yeah, was me and you and no one else. Yeah, fine, all right. It's thought. different when you have eyes on you, isn't I was it? Trying, I was trying to get the dome. I was trying to focus on the dome and I messed oh, it up. Floor, oh, I was got the floor. floor. Get the floor. floor. Oh. Wow. This, is, this is absolute disgrace. Come on, Darry, you're up. Very up. nice, though. <laughs> I'm going to play it safe. <laughs> Four back, big question. Oh, I'm always back. back. We don't like the forward pull. We're all back, baby. I don't like the forward pull. I think it's a lot of bollocks. Nah, I think so, yeah. Oh, look at that. Uh, all shouldn't be proud of that. No professionals. Clean glass. No professionals. That's a bit better than a rush. That's got a bubble on it. Get that out of here. <laughs> 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 I'd be happy with that. Mate, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. That's all right, isn't it? 
Yeah. They're 80 quid each then, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll sign it if you want. <laughs> Try another yeah, go. Why are you big embarrassment? Oh, sorry, right. <laughs> you big embarrassment. <laughs> Sounds like the story of my life, that. Yeah, I'm just going to do a post-match interview with James Haskell after that absolutely yeah. embarrassing performance yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the half of Soho was watching you. How yeah. are you currently feeling? Um, a little bit ashamed. I feel like I brought a curse to my family name. I would say, listen, if that's the worst thing I've ever done, which we all know is <laughs> absolutely not. not. <laughs> definitely not. No, not no, even no. on the spectrum of bad things mm. that I've done. Normally, the first time we had this thing, I, I poured a pint. I actually, I think I outdid you. It was voted by the people. Yeah. So I got a little bit cut, carried away, the pressure of the, the bar. And, yeah, it's a, it's, you know, a, it's a different pour as well. First the time, is. I think, to be fair, you did all right. And uh, well done for drinking it yourself and not giving it to the customer. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Very much. But no, I, I, I'm disappointed, but How good is the, the taste, taste unbelievable. Yeah, we're unbelievable. Very, very pleased with that. The old shtick on the glass. Yeah. I've got that for you. Oh, sure, we have you. I'm actually just, I'll hold this in between us. Uh, Go on. Talk us quickly through the Devonshire. It's, are you, is he a bit sideways there? Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I've only had one pint. It's like this. I, mean, yeah. well, I was just trying to listen um, Oh, sh you're open what? Uh, two, 14 two. weeks now. So we opened on the 5th of November. We wanted to do a big pub for Soho, uh, very much for the people of Soho and the people who come. It's definitely got a bit of an Irish accent, but it's yeah. not an Irish pub. Yeah. And uh, we're having a great time. I was saying time. that, yeah. yeah. Dave behind the camera was saying like it's an Irish pub. I said, technically, it's... There's an Irish vibe, but it's not an Irish pub, you know, it doesn't have the that Devon, fucking... There's been a pub here since 1793 called the Devonshire, yeah. and we've not changed its name, and we've kept its heritage and history. It's a pub for the people who work around here, who live around here, and the people of London who want to come to the West End and have a good pint while they're on their way somewhere else, like well, going to or stuff like that. Am I right in saying it wasn't called the Devonshire? Like, you you read, you kind of took back the name of the Devonshire? So the Devonshire was the original name of the pub, and, the, and that pub closed in 2009 and became Jamie Oliver's... Uh, that's Italian. what it was, yes. Yeah, so oh, so hell. we so we resurrected it really, yeah. basically. So we brought it back to life, life, which which is something that Charlie and I wanted to always mm. do, and we think it's a noble thing where everyone else is closing pubs down and changing them. We wanted to find one that was a pub before and in the footprint and bring it back yeah. to life. T taking, telling Jamie Oliver to sod off with his school well, dinners. No, one man's sorrows is another man's <laughs> yeah. oh, bless, cash. Ja bless Jamie, we're very fond of Jamie and he's got a brilliant restaurant here down the road. Oh, and, and it was a tough time, uh, that sort of pre-pandemic mm. time in, in the restaurant business in the West End, particularly down this end. So uh, absolutely um, no, no, no hard Oh, fine, sweet. Oh, she looked unbelievable. Right, I can take you everywhere. Animal. Thank you, brother. Cheers, buddy. This is like the best wait day till ever. Settle, wait till it's settled, come on. Wait till oh, it's settled. Oh, oh, fucking, you settle you in a minute. Um, oh, you definitely would. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so I honestly thought the lost Johnny Sexton, when we, when we talked about France and <clears> Ireland, I thought, you honestly, you couldn't pick between the two of them. Yeah. Um, I thought France had losing Dupont, I thought was an issue, but not, not massively. Turns out Dupont leaving France has been absolute wheels off. Mm. Um, your what's man the, is. What's the crack with that? I don't it's know. It's so weird. Like, yeah, you're I trying know. to win a fucking Olympic medal, but. It's, I know. I just so think strange. Like, I just think, um, t truthfully though, if I, uh, you know, I, I played sevens and I've tried, the Commonwealth Games when the first sevens came in was an opportunity for me. Mm. I literally was would have given anything just because that Olympics Commonwealth Games is such a unique experience. Getting to the Van, uh, Van right. Village, do you know what I mean? It's just such a rare. And thing he's just to a do. level of I do whatever the fuck I want. And he's that good. He's done Six Nations. He's got he's got many more Six Nations coming yeah. up. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But to, but back to um, to Ireland. Un Unbelievable. Yeah. The young in terms ten. of like you've been around the Six Nations years, like in what who would stand out? Not players wise. Best teams. I'm sure there's been England teams yeah. over the last 20 years. Like, are they up there? Yeah. I mean, I would say that Ireland at the moment, the, the brand of rugby they're playing is uh, is unmatched. Offloading game, the intensity, the attention to detail. Like, what I mean by attention to detail is you can have moves, you can have plans. Every Irish player knows so much that. Um, you know, even when they're getting into position, just where they put their hands for a dummy, the mm. way they sell things is just... How much you know, of that is down to Andy Farrell? How much is it down to the unbelievable I, talent? I think it's unbelievable talent, but I think Andy Farrell just driving standards. I think the settled nature of the team, I think the confidence. I think the young kid who's coming at number 10. Speaking of settled nature. Oh, is it really? Do you like that? Thank you. Look at that, mate. That is just, look at it. That's fucking good shit. Do you want to get in on That's that That's art. That's art. You know Haskell didn't pour that? Yeah, he didn't, yeah. Absolutely didn't. No offense. So, but... Delightful. Should we see if we can split the, uh, split the heart? Split the G. You have to put it down, put it down. Oh, I didn't. I fucking split the heart instead. Ish. An okay effort. Six out okay. of ten. Six out of ten. Um, but, I would, uh, but I would say the, the young kid is coming at ten. Uh, Jack Crowley. Crack Crowley. Oh, Crack Crowley. Crack Crowley. <laughs> Crack Crowley. You've said it. Uh, Crack Crowley in here. Yeah, Jack Crowley. 
I'm next level. I mean, the way he's he playing is easily. He it looks like he's been there for ages. Yeah. And I think everybody has risen, has raised their game to help support him. So mm. I'm so impressed. Arnhem are by far and away the best Northern Hemisphere side. I think they're going to absolutely smash everyone and win another Grand Slam. Brilliant. And then your faithful old oh, England. Englishman. Good old in England. Um, so England for me, um, I still don't know what they're... I see what they're trying to do, but they're not really doing it particularly well. I think it's a little bit frustrating at times. Uh, I think Steve Borth is a great coach. I think the players are fantastic. I think um, the new defensive system, if they get it right, will cause a lot of teams problems. You saw it against um, Wales. When they got it right, they were knocking people back. They were bringing guys into the game, making massive collisions. I, is it, have they still got a lot of work to do to capture the fans? Yeah, 100%. I still don't think they're playing with the attacking flair that I think they should do. Do you think they have the talent? I think that, yes, I do. I think, you know, um, like people like Tommy Freeman, I think, are looking unbelievable. I think, obviously, some of the younger players, Ethan Roots look great. Mm. I think that uh, Ch Chandler <laughs> Cunningham, Cunningham South, um, when he comes on, what a hell of an athlete. I think Marrow sort of raised his game a little bit. I think um, Alex Mitchell at nine. The problem is, Obviously, you've got 15 other players trying to stop you doing what you're doing. Mm. And I think, for me, they're still not quite sure exactly what they're doing. And the, and the pressure, even under Jamie George, trying to recaps the imagination of the fans, starts to come on. But they are two from two. Yeah. Will they be able to beat Scotland and Ireland? Where do you I give us know. a quick one to six? So I think, I think um, Ireland will win. I think uh, Ireland won. I think oh, maybe Scotland second, England third. Uh, um, France fourth, France fourth. Um, and then Wales fifth, Italy sixth. And, and he shot. plugged the, the Good Bad Rugby podcast yeah, as well. He, he plugged the books, or, the books earlier. Mm. He plugged the, um, probably won't have enough room on the memory card. Um, he plugged the... I got my uh, music. The music. Yeah. Mm. DJ's going well. Played Ministry of Sound the other day. God. Oh yeah. Killed it. 